So my name is Julia and welcome to my presentation on my practicum with the Minnesota Brain Injury Alliance. I'd like to start with a very large land acknowledgement. Um, so my practicum took place on the traditional lands of the Wapakute and Ocheti Sakwin peoples in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but I'm currently presenting from the traditional lands of the Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish, Stolo, and Musqueam peoples known as East Vancouver, and I'm a digital visitor to the lands of the Wasonic, Lekwungen, and Songhees peoples. I also think it's important to acknowledge my social location. I am a cisgender white settler woman living on Turtle Island. I am a citizen of Canada by birth and I'm a member of the Two-Spirit LGBTQIA community. I'm able-bodied and neurodivergent. So my placement was with the Minnesota Brain Injury Alliance, whose mission is to raise awareness and offer support and improve the quality of life of everyone impacted by brain injury and stroke. I worked primarily um, by educating others, uh, whether that was the general public, police, politicians, health professionals, people suffering from brain injuries, um, yeah, so I mostly worked by helping to improve health literacy. I also wore many different kinds of hats. I did some data analysis working with our resource facilitation team, um, looking at referral rates by county, um, which was really fun and definitely a challenging role to take on. And for my case scenario, I did a systematized literature review on post-stroke depression in minority ethnic and racial communities. This kind of research was really important for me to do because Black Americans and Hispanics have like much, much higher rates of, of stroke compared to white counterparts. Uh, yet post-stroke depression is really not explored uh, when you're lo looking at race. So here's the process of my systematized literature review all the way from background research, protocol development, all the way to reporting. My preliminary findings, something that really shocked me was how little race was reported in relevant findings um, or how people would categorize, okay, you have white and everyone else and didn't really look at like how potentially the different cultural things would impact people's reporting of depression or their experiences. Um, so yeah, it was really difficult for me to find relevant studies. And when I did find relevant studies, I was surprised at how irrelevant they ended up being. Um, and one thing that I think would be helpful for future research is looking at how depression reporting tools impact um, how, how, it's, how depression is reported in different cultures and communities. Cause I think that might skew data, whether it's um, you know, done by a psychologist or psychiatrist or clinician or whether it's self-reported depression. One of the major themes of my practicum was the facilitation of health literacy and self-care. Uh, in Minnesota, health literacy rates are super low, even in well-educated communities. And brain injury and stroke can really impact how health literate someone is because your memory is really impacted. You forget how to take care of yourself or whether you've already done something. So it was really, uh, it was really important that we help people by giving them easy to follow brain injury specific health literacy tools. And because the Brain Injury Alliance of Minnesota is, their values are so rooted in social justice, so too is my practicum. So I was able to conduct my review from a lens of health equity to address, to address barriers in marginalized communities. I also helped work with people in brain injuries um, in teaching them how to be self-advocates, uh, where we helped them connect them with their members of parliament to create um, legislation. While I was there, we got a bus legislation passed where they uh, passed a bill to slow down the um, time of disembarkment from a stop so that people could get to their seats on time because we had one member who suffered a brain injury because they fell while the bus was moving. 
knowledge areas. So one of the big things we did was improving health and reducing health inequities in communities. One way we did this was working with uh, educating the police. Um, as many of you know, uh, there's a really high rate of police brutality in Minneapolis. It is where George Floyd was killed. And so we worked with educating the police on signs of brain injury because we found that they were like looking for like a profile of like, oh, what does brain injury look like? What are the signs? And we had to like tell them everyone could have a brain injury. Anyone on the street you see could have a brain injury. So treat everyone with empathy. empathy. Like you don't need to resort to violence right away, you know. Um, and then calls to action. Um, one thing that I'm really passionate about is community-led projects. And I think indigenous voice, voices should be heard in every form of research that involves the general public, specifically indigenous-led projects. So because I want to continue a career in research, I'm hoping to raise Indigenous voices to the levels of researchers and have them work alongside me in all of my projects. Um, yeah. And then key insights and development. In the middle of my practicum while I was in Minnesota, I was rushed to the hospital and had to undergo emergency surgery on my appendix. Uh, I did not have health insurance and it was a very terrifying and inconvenient situation. And one thing I really noticed afterwards was how much I internalized our society's views of achievement and how achievement centric we are. Like I wanted to go to work the next day after my surgery and everyone in my life, thankfully was like, you, you're allowed to rest. So my biggest insight was resting is okay. If I hadn't taken a rest, I think my work would have been way worse quality My mental health would have suffered and I think I'm very appreciative now of the importance of like listening to your body and just not needing to achieve all the time. And yeah, I, thank you guys so much for listening to my presentation. Big thank you to all my peers, teachers and mentors and everyone who was supportive of me, especially going through my appendectomy. Um, and thank you to everyone who has made my bachelor's of arts in this program such an amazing, fun experience. Yeah. And any questions? <laughs>